not true. Not not true in some cases, but mainly not true. <laughs> what? Hello everybody, welcome to the Look Fantastic YouTube channel. My name is James Welsh and today we're gonna bust some skincare myths. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe to the Look Fantastic YouTube channel, hit that like button if you enjoy the video, and turn on the notification bell to keep up with future videos. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about some of the biggest myths surrounding skincare, if they're right, if they're wrong, if true or false even, and I'm gonna be sharing some of my favorite products along the way as well. One of the biggest myths flying around the internet is that you can exfoliate every single day. If you're like me, you love an exfoliating stage in your routine. I especially love using exfoliating acids like AHAs, BHAs, and even PHAs to help even skin tone, texture, and generally just make your skin look overall more vibrant and brighter and alive. However, a lot of chemical exfoliants will instruct you to use their products once or twice a day. In reality, not only is that not recommended, but it's just not necessary. There is no need to exfoliate every single day. Whether you are using a physical scrub or an exfoliating acid, over exfoliation can lead to damage of your skin barrier, that all important barrier that keeps everything in. A damaged skin barrier can lead to a loss of hydration, inflammation, irritation, and redness. It can make your skincare products sting, even the gentlest of products. If this happens, stop all treatments, stop all exfoliation, and stick with your basics. But you can absolutely, if you want to, work your way up to using an exfoliator every single day. From once a week with lower percentages, to two to three times a week with higher percentages, to every single day with a lower percentage if you want, if you feel the need to. But again, it's just not needed once, twice, or three times a week, depending on your skin types, your skin conditions, the general state of your skin, is usually more than enough. However, if I do feel like my two to three times a week isn't enough, if I feel like, you know, maybe it's summer and I'm a little bit more oily, or my skin's looking more congested, or it's a bit dull, or something like that, I will introduce a gentler exfoliation. For example, the Inculus Salicylic Acid Cleanser is a great way to exfoliate your skin in a gentle way, effectively targeting blackheads, breakouts, decongesting your skin, and I can safely use this alongside my other exfoliants. You can also find gentler exfoliants to BHAs and AHAs in Korean skincare. For example, the Cosrx Blackhead Power Liquid uses betaine salicylate as an exfoliant. This is a mix of a moisturizing ingredient called betaine and of course salicylic acid, making for a very gentle and mild exfoliant. Again, I would use this maybe once a week alongside my regular exfoliating steps if I feel my skin just needs an extra exfoliation. Very rare, usually in the summer. The next myth is that you don't need to wear sunscreen inside. It's kind of a myth and kind of not. It depends, yes and no. It really does depend on so many different factors. It depends on the layout of your home, where you're working. We wear sunscreen, of course, to protect our skin from UVA and UVB rays. UVA are the aging rays, UVB are the burning rays. Of course, if you are in your house in a dark room with the curtains closed, or you're very, very far away from a window, you're not really gonna be getting a whole onslaught of these rays. However, if you work from home and you work in front of a window, or even at your office at work, you work by a massive window, sun protection may be a bit more of a concern for you. Glass is pretty good at blocking UVB, in fact I think it blocks all UVB, I might be wrong there, but you're still getting some UVA rays. So to cut a very long story short, if you want to use sunscreen as an almost anti-aging product, and you are exposed to strong sunlight throughout the day at home, say you're sitting in front of a window, then just pop on a sunscreen in the morning, maybe reapply it once throughout the day. But do you need to apply sunscreen if you're just at home relaxing in front of the TV? Not really, no. For me, however, applying a sunscreen has just become a daily habit, and I like to opt for sunscreens that are super light, non-intrusive, don't sting the eyes, and leave no white cast. That is why I actually love La Roche-Posay's Ultra Light Invisible Fluid. This is an SPF 50 plus, broad spectrum sunscreen, meaning it protects you from UVA and UVB. I'll apply this once in the morning, and then once throughout the day if I'm just doing nothing at home. But if I am out, this is light enough to reapply every couple of hours, especially if I'm out in the sun. The next myth, you should only use actives in the evening because they make your skin more photosensitive. Sometimes when I share my morning skincare routine, a few people get like a little bit concerned that I'm using actives in the morning for this very reason. And while this is true, yes, they are gonna make your skin a little bit more photosensitive, it does that overall. So if you use them in the evening, your skin's still gonna be a little bit sensitive by the morning. So to cut a very long story short, as long as you're using actives, wear sunscreen. That's AHAs, BHAs, vitamin Cs, azelaic acid, which you're gonna be seeing a lot more of this year. In fact, 
there are some actives I prefer to use in the morning, like a vitamin C serum, as they actually help protect your skin from free radical damage, including dark spots, premature aging, uh, destruction of collagen, dullness and dryness. If you pair this with a sunscreen, your skin's pretty much ready to go to war. Another La Roche-Posay product that I absolutely love is the Pure Vitamin C 10 Serum, another lightweight serum that you can layer up with products in the morning and not feel oily and greasy, and it's going to give your skin those antioxidants whilst also helping even out your skin tone in general. The last myth one I'm very passionate about is natural is better. Not true. Not not true in some cases, but mainly not true. <laughs> What? There's this idea that natural ingredients are better for us because they come from nature, they come from the earth. Over synthetic, man-made ingredients produced in a lab. And this idea has gained popularity with the rise of clean beauty, an unregulated term that actually doesn't mean anything. And the issue with this myth is that there are a lot of natural ingredients, especially that you see in DIY skincare recipes, that can cause a lot of irritation and damage to our skin. Lemon juice, for example, is one of the... <laughs> the many natural ingredients that are very damaging for the skin but are extremely popular, despite its ability to severely dry out our skin and potentially blister our skin. Nature is very, very good at protecting itself and killing things, <laughs> but just like synthetic man-made ingredients, you have your good ingredients and you have your bad. Man-made ingredients tend to be a little bit more predictable as far as how we know they're gonna perform with our skin, often making them more effective, but we have some amazing natural ingredients too, like green tea, centella, and honey, just to name some of my absolute favourites. My personal favourite options is the best of both worlds, when brands take the best of science with nature and merge them together to make these very unique formulations. That usually often means that they have a good preservative system, meaning they're not going to go mouldy within a week, you don't have to store them in the fridge. And Pharmacy is one of those brands, for me, who merge nature with science to create amazing products. The Pharmacy Green Clean Cleansing Balm is one of my absolute favourite products, not just of pharmacies, but of all time. This removes my layers of sunscreen, layers and layers of sunscreen effortlessly. Without drying my skin, without stripping my skin, it's got none of those irritating natural ingredients in, and just ones that are really beneficial for your skin. So there we go, I hope that helped. We've busted a few skincare myths today, and also shared a few of my favourite products along the way. Thank you so, so much for watching. Again, leave a thumbs up if you like this video. You can check out more skincare content from myself, just type James Welsh into YouTube, and don't forget to subscribe to the Look Fantastic YouTube channel, and I'll see you around.